Okay, thank you. I'm really happy to be here today um, to share some results that my colleagues and I have been working on for the past several years that are relevant to the Deep Carbon Observatory, looking at volatile cycling within the Aleutian Arc. So we've heard the past few days about how important the subduction cycle is. Uh, this is a key mechanism of volatile transfer among Earth's shallow and deep reservoirs, and we know this has important implications for uh, Earth processes such as magmatism, volcanism, and the long-term evolution of Earth. We also know that volatile sources um, and their migration among reservoirs can be tracked using the isotopic composition of key volatiles, in particularly carbon. Prior, uh, or I guess until recently, few systems have had robust constraints on the sources and quantities of carbon inputs and outputs within subduction zones. But thanks in large part to work by the Deep Carbon Observatory, we now have more data where we can actually make progress in this important goal. So within a subduction zone setting, we have volatiles from three sources that are supplied to arc volcanoes. The subducted slab, which can include altered oceanic crust, the overlying marine sediments, um, the next source is the mantle wedge, and the third one is the crust. And each of these regions has a somewhat characteristic isotopic signature that we can use to identify the source of these volatiles. So specifically, inorganic carbon, like we might find in the altered oceanic crust, I'll also refer to it as carbonate, has a carbon isotopic composition of about zero per mil. Uh, marine sediments, also from the subducted slab, uh, are composed primarily of organic carbon with a carbon isotopic composition much lower in the region of, range of minus 25 per mil. And then the mantle wedge falls between with a range of about minus 6.5 per mil. So we can use these isotopic compositions to try to investigate volatile cycling. So the goal of our work was to do this within the Aleutian arc. We wanted to use uh, new constraints on the isotopic composition of subducted inputs and volcanic outputs and a simple mixing model to really characterize volatile cycling within this subduction zone. So our target is the Aleutian Arc. It's home to 54 historically active volcanoes, each marked by a triangle. The red triangles represent uh, volcanoes where we have carbon isotopic measurements in the volcanic gases. Uh, this arc is also notable because it has significant along strike variations in subducted inputs, in particular the subducted sediment fluxes. It also has a long strike of variations in convergence angle, and what's relevant to this talk is that uh, the crust varies. The Aleutian Arc is built primarily on continental crust, where we might expect a greater contribution of crustal carbon, where the rest of the arc is built primarily on oceanic crust, uh, where we might expect crustal carbonates to be a minor factor. So in this study, we wanted to use two new data sets. Um, the first were improved constraints on subducted carbon inputs. This is work by my colleagues uh, Terry Plank and Alberto Malinverno, and they've used the carbonized, or they've used marine cores, oops, sorry. Marine cores from the Gulf of Alaska to estimate the carbon isotopic composition of the subducted inputs, and they find that they're unusually light, ranging from minus seven to minus 19 per mil. They also, on the right-hand side, extrapolated the carbon sediment fluxes for the entire arc. And what was particularly important is that they distinguished between the lower marine sediments which we assume get subducted all the way beneath the arcs where they might um, produce melts, and the overlying terrigenous or trench fill sediments, which we're not sure if they get subducted beneath the arc or they may get scraped off during subduction accretion. And then the second data set we use were new constraints on volcanic carbon outputs. Uh, so the figure on the left-hand side shows longitude from east to west, a carbon isotopic composition on the y-axis, and these are our volcanic gas measurements for the Aleutian Arc. And what's notable is that prior to 2015, we only had constraints from the eastern and central arc segments, but in 2015, Tobias Fisher and I had the opportunity to join a collaborative campaign out in the western Aleutians. This was supported by the NSF Geoprisms program, the Deep Carbon Observatory, and the Alaska Volcano Observatory. So we were able to add some new data and kind of round out our arc measurements. And here's a photo of Tobias taking a sample at Garraway Volcano. So we wanted to use these two new data sets and apply this to a mixing model with the, and to answer the question of what combination of carbon sources and fluxes can explain our observed carbon isotopic composition in the volcanic outputs. So we use this simple equation here. See, oops, sorry. C sub V is the carbon isotopic composition of our volcanic gases. 
that's equal to the carbon isotopic composition times the flux of our three sources. So the organic sediments, the mantle, and carbonate. And that's divided by the flux of each of these sources, flux of sediments, mantle, and carbonate. So we know several of these factors. We know the carbon isotopic composition of our volcanic outputs. We know the carbon isotopic composition and the flux of the sediments from Terry and Alberto's work. And we have estimates of the carbon isotopic composition of the mantle and the carbonate. Uh, minus 6.5 for the mantle and about zero for carbonate. We don't know the flux of the mantle or the flux of carbonate. So this is what we need to solve for. Um, one assumption that we're making is that isotopic fractionation due to degassing is limited to about minus two per mil. We don't have good temporal resolution on the carbon isotopes from our volcanoes to say better than this. So we're, uh, we're using results from work by uh, Cindy Werner and Deb Bergfeld from the Cascades Arc where they have time series measurements and they estimate carbon fractionation from persistently degassing arc volcanoes on the range of minus one to minus 1.5 per mil. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna consider end member scenarios and try to solve iter iteratively to constrain uh, the best sources or the best models of volatile cycling for this arc. So I'm gonna get into results, but before that I'm gonna map out what I'm gonna show you because there's a lot going on in this figure. So again, we have, oh, I'm sorry, I keep doing that. We have longitude on the x-axis from east to west. We have carbon isotopic composition on the y-axis. Again, the red triangles are observed from our volcanic gas measurements. The lines are predicted from our mixing models. The red line represents if we have incoming sediments only, so all the trench fill sediments are scraped off during the subduction, and the black line is where we have um, total recycling of the subducted sediments. These dashed lines, which might be hard to see, show the boundaries between what we're calling the eastern, central, and western arc segments. And really what we're looking for is a match. We want to see that our observed volcanic gas outputs fall between these end members. And that would suggest that we have a reasonable solution to our mixing model. Okay, so the first scenario that we considered is that we had recycling of the subducted sediments with variable trench fill off scraping, and we had a constant mantle flux. Uh, we have these light carbon isotopes in the central elutions, and we needed to match these. We needed to figure out what we could do to get a fit to those light carbon isotopes. So iteratively, we calculated that we needed a mantle flux equal to about 25% of the mean sediment flux. And this would give us a good fit if we assume that all the sediment is recycled for the central part of the arc. Uh, so what we see here is that we get a good match with this model for the central elutions, but we don't get a good match in either the eastern and the western segments. So our next scenario that we considered is, again, we have recycling of the sediments with variable trench fill off scraping. And here we consider a variable mantle flux. So we just calculated what mantle flux would be required to get a fit in these eastern and western segments where we have heavier carbon isotopes. And in doing this, we find that it requires uh, a mantle flux 10 times the mean sediment flux, which is quite high. We're not sure this is realistic. Um, but in doing this, we do get a good fit to our observations. And then the third scenario, we assumed, again, recycling of the subducted sediments with variable trench fill off scraping. Again, we assumed a constant mantle flux of 25% the mean sediment flux, and we assumed a carbonate flux was also contributing to our, um, our outputs. In this case, we calculated that a carbonate flux of about 1.5 times the mean sediment flux gave us a decent match for both the eastern and western segments. Um, it does not give us a good fit for the central elutions. So we concluded that really a combination of these different scenarios is required to match what we're seeing in the volcanic gases. So our best fit scenario, we have recycling of the observed sediment, again with variable trench fill off scraping. We have uh, a constant mantle flux equal to 25% the mean sediment flux. And we have a carbonate flux only in the eastern and western segments equal to 1.5 times the sediment flux or about 648 kilograms carbon per meter per year. So this gives us a pretty good match of our data. We think this is the best solution. And one other interesting observation is that the flux of carbon corresponding to this mixing model is shown on the right-hand side. Uh, so flux, predicted flux is on the y-axis, longitude on the x-axis. The black line represents complete recycling of the sediments. The red line uh, suggests that we had complete off-scraping of the trench fill sediments. And what's interesting is that we this model requires a higher carbon flux in both the western and eastern segments 
than the central part of the arc. Uh, we're still thinking about this, but it's an interesting observation. Okay, so what might be these carbonate sources that we're inferring from the eastern and western segments? We think that in the eastern Aleutians, uh, the most likely source is crustal carbonate. This is because there is evidence for sedimentary rocks that have carbon-bearing rocks within them, both in organic and inorganic form. Um, so we think the crust is the most likely solution for the eastern Aleutians. In contrast, in the western Aleutians, as I mentioned earlier, we don't have an obvious crustal source. Uh, so we think that the most likely carbonate source in the western Aleutians is carbonate from the altered oceanic crust. Uh, we think that this might be reasonable because there is evidence for slab melting a little bit farther west. This is work by Jean Yogodzinski. So to conclude, uh, using our new constraints on subducted inputs and volcanic outputs and this mixing model, we try to constrain volatile cycling in the Aleutian arc. We find that our best fit model suggests that we have complete recycling of the subducted sediments and a constant mantle flux of about 25% the mean sediment flux for the central Aleutian part of the arc, but that can't explain the western or eastern segments. For those segments, it requires either a significant mantle uh, contribution or a carbonate flux, most likely a combination of the two. In the eastern segment, we think the most likely source of carbonate is the crust, and in the west, we think the most likely solution is carbonate from the altered oceanic crust. The implications of this work is that, at least in the Aleutian arc, subducted sediment carbon is not supplied in significant quantity to the deep mantle, and this also means that the altered oceanic crust carbonate is potentially an important source of carbon to the exosphere, uh, with less carbonate subducted to the deep mantle from this source than we may have previously thought. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have time for questions. Anyone? Yep. Just, just a quick one. Are there going to be data from Boldir? We don't have any gases from Boldir. Okay. Because once you get out there, then the lead isotopes are going to give you a lot of information about how much sediment you can. It's a whole extra constraint. But you have to get out into that gradient to really, really low lead isotope ratios. Yeah. Our farthest west degassing volcano is Kiska. Yeah. But I think Terry is looking at the lead isotopes. I don't know where Terry is. Cool, it's, but that was really cool data. Thank you. One more question there. Any thoughts why carbonate is missing in the central section? Well, there's not any carbonate in the subducted slab, and it's built on oceanic crust, so that's my interpretation. Do you have another idea? No, no. Okay. <laughs> Patrick? Do you try using CO2 and M3 ratios to discriminate between all of them? CO2 and what? Helium? I did. They were a little confusing. It does, the mixing models showed that the Western Aleutian does have a greater mantle source, um, but it had carbonate throughout the whole arc in varying compositions. I think it might be affected due to degassing. Great. Thank you very much. And we'll move on to the next speaker.